One of my absolute favorite combinations of tone woods is a cedar top and an East Indian rosewood back and sides. My favorite tailor ever is the 712 and the 714. I think is just the best that guitar has ever been. Now, what I have in front of me is a Breedlove with a cedar top, East Indian rosewood back and sides. So this model is called the Triple O slash C-R-E. Uh, I'm assuming it's cedar, rosewood, and the E means electric because this guitar also has an LR Bags uh, element. So this is the VTC, so the volume and tone controller right inside the sound hole here. So what I find most exciting about this guitar is all of these features, this feature set at this price point, which is why I wanted to give it a three question gear review. Now, three question gear reviews are really straightforward. What's good about this thing? What's bad about this thing? And if you're in the market, should you buy it from my perspective? So all of these are opinions. These are all guitars that I typically own. It's very rare that I review stuff that I don't own personally. Uh, I got this guitar on a trade. Now, so this is a Breedlove. It is made in Korea. It is designed, engineered, planned out in the US, but then all the construction and uh, the build happens in Korea. Now, 20 years ago, that would have meant a very different thing than it means now. So what is good about that? Let's just lead off with this. This guitar has amazing features. As I mentioned before, this has a cedar top, rosewood back and sides. It also has a slot headstock, which is just so palpably cool. It also has really wonderful tuners. So these are these are proper full on Grover tuners, similar that you would get, similar to what you would get on the Triple O, uh, the Triple O SM. Actually, I don't even know if those have Grovers anymore. Those are very, very good tuners. Uh, good gears, big ratio. Uh, I think they're 16 to one. They're really helpful. They tune really reliably. It also has a tusk nut, tusk saddle, uh, has a pyramid bridge. And this is where there is one thing, I won't call this a bad thing, but it's a strange thing. So this bridge, see this platen or platform, whatever you would call this piece of the bridge, it's very tall especially compared to my Waterloo. I'll put a picture of the Waterloo Bridge in, which also is a pyramid, um, but it's just very big. Now the pens, they do look like they're ebony. Uh, this guitar is tons of quality. Now, what's bad about this guitar? So we won't call that bridge thing. It's just, the, you can tell that the neck is set really far back, which means that the bridge needs to be up pretty high. That's fine, it adds to the volume and kind of output of the guitar. The guitar sounds really good. Now, moving into what is bad about this guitar. For some people, it will be problematic that this guitar is made in Southeast Asia, uh, in Korea. For me, I think that this guitar is really well built and I think that Korean guitar I think that Korean guitars really are uh, really impressive for the price, especially for this price point. This guitar is 850 or so. Uh, I think new it was 1200. Um, it's a ton of guitar for the money. Now, continuing what is bad about this, this guitar is ridiculously heavy. I don't know how to explain it. I, it has thrown me off each time I pick it up. I believe Breedlove on some of their more expensive, and this could be a really good feature. They have a bridge, I don't know what you would call it. It's an inside the body um, adjustment. And so basically it comes from the end pin and it goes in above the bridge and basically you can turn it and when you do, it pushes the bridge back up. I think this guitar may have that, what do they call that, a tone bar? I forget what they call it. Um, that's the only thing that really sticks out to me on this guitar is that it is quite heavy. Um, and it's kind of heavy towards the back, which is strange because this is not, this guitar should be a fairly light construction. Cedar is very light. Rosewood isn't particularly light, but. So when I really survey this guitar, when I really look at it for what it is, it's really impressively built. Um, there's really good features and there are things that I, um, you can tell that to get into that price point, there are certain value changes. Like one of the tiny little things, the back of the headstock here, it's just a little clunky. And some of that is you need to add mass in here because you need to be able to support, you know, if you're removing so much material with these slots. Um, but it's just a tiny bit clunky. The last thing that I know that people will get hung up on is that this has a polyurethane finish, but almost every guitar these days has a polyurethane finish. Polyurethane is tough as nails. It is reliable. It will look beautiful long after most of us have aged and gone gray and gotten pudgy. Um, but polyurethane is uh, particularly strong and robust. 
it's not that grateful if it ever gets abused. This guitar has not been abused. Um, but polyurethane could be a hang-up for some people. Overall, this guitar is really, really sharp. Um, it sounds really good. It has a really good mellow voice. It's very dynamic. Uh, this guitar, to me, this guitar would be perfect for a singer-songwriter um, or a someone playing in church that needs a good pickup, has a unique guitar, wants a really cool tone, wants a really diverse guitar that can cover really boomy, strummy parts, but also can do the light and more articulate stuff. This guitar feels like a real winner to me. So... Uh, I think if you're in the market for this, this is one that I didn't know about. I don't pay too much attention to kind of those mid-priced imports, but this guitar is a ton of guitar for 850 bucks. All in, this guitar is a winner. So, three question gear review on the Breedlove Cascade Triple O CRE Cedar Rosewood Electric. Um, really good guitar. So, thanks for watching this video. I'm Jeremy, I'm the Guitar Hunter. Go fill the world with music and friendship. The way that you can do that, the way you can get connected with this channel, make sure these videos keep happening. You can become a patron. For three bucks a month, you get videos early, you get Q and A's with me. I wanna thank my ride or die patrons. Thanks Adam, thanks Andy, thanks Greg. You guys are so helpful and you're just dear friends. Another helpful resource is the buyer's guide. Go to the jeremytheguitarhunter.com slash shop. You can find the buyer's guide. If you are trying to figure out which guitar is right for you, if you're trying to figure out negotiation skills and how to find guitars in real life and what they're worth, this is the most helpful resource I have. So check that out in the store. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. See ya.